Good morning, church family. My message this morning is a message that's timely given the unprecedented challenges we are facing as a nation and really ultimately as a church family. My message this morning is we will not be afraid. Turn, if you will, to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. And let us read this psalm and find the promises of God's Word today to help us as we confront the challenges of this virus, but also the challenges we face day by day in our lives. Psalm 46. Hear the word of the Lord. God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not be afraid. Though the earth trembles and the mountains topple into the depths of the seas, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with its turmoil, Selah. There is a river. Its streams delight the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is within her. She will not be toppled. God is with her when the morning dawns. Nations rage. Kingdoms topple. The earth melts when he lifts his voice. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold, Selah. Come see the works of the Lord, who brings devastation on the earth. He makes war cease throughout the earth. He shatters bows and cuts spears to pieces. He burns up the chariots. Stop your fighting and know that I am God. Exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah. The one thing that permeates this psalm is a truth that all of us need in these very difficult days. It is the truth found in that second verse when he tells us, we will not be afraid. Hear the word of the Lord. Look at that first verse. God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not be afraid. We have a tendency to be fearful in life. We face all kinds of calamities that tempt us to fear. But the scripture here tells us we are not to be afraid. What are those things that cause us to be afraid, that tempt us to be afraid? Well, he explains those beginning in verse 2. Though the earth trembles, earthquakes happen all around us. Just yesterday, there was a 5.7 magnitude earthquake in Utah. When the earth begins to shake, fear tends to grip the heart. He also says, though the earth trembles and the mountains topple. We see in the news from time to time, landslides, whole mountainsides collapsing, destroying cities, roads, just washed away, oftentimes, as it says in the scripture here, into the depths of the sea. In verse 3, he says, though its waters roar and foam, Hurricanes are something we are all too familiar with on the East Coast. That vast power of wind that comes blowing in, that tidal surge that comes in, and that great body of water that just washes away homes and businesses and streets. We remember the tsunami that occurred whenever there's a great earthquake under the ocean, and that great body of water just comes in and destroys everything in its path. Yes, natural calamities calls us to be tempted to fear. But there are greater calamities than these, and they are the calamities that we face in our daily lives. Oftentimes, the calamity of sickness comes upon us, and in a moment's notice, our life is turned upside down because of a diagnosis of sickness. May I mention that word, cancer, that confronts us, that devastates with just one visit to the doctor. Think about the calamity of the family problems that we face in our daily lives. Whether it be broken homes, divorce, whether it be the drug epidemic that is confronting our nation. All of these are calamities that oftentimes cause us to fear. In the uncertainty of the days we are in, the financial concerns, the financial worries, not just of daily life, but also of the crisis that we're in, are things that cause us to be tempted to fear. And yes, as many grow older and face the challenges of age and the difficulties of age, oftentimes those too are earthquakes that shake our lives to the bone. 
They are floodwaters that seem to pour into our lives and overwhelm us. Other calamities confront us. Look at verse 6. Nations rage, kingdoms topple. In the world in which we live, political instability is the word of the day. Political infighting, back and forth, division like we've never seen in our country seems to pervade the culture in which we live. And oftentimes we think, will it ever stop? Will it ever come to an end? Verse 9 speaks of wars and weapons of war. Verse 9 mentions wars and bows and spears and chariots. We think of the wars that confront us or the threat of war that is all around us. Though the threat of ISIS seems to have subsided some, though the instability of Syria seems to have eased some, we're still confronted with Iran, the challenges of Russia and China, the instability of North Korea, and yet shall I mention even the Middle East and the boiling pot which is there. All of these seem to be at a boiling point, and we wonder at any moment which of these are going to boil over. Which one will explode first? If these weren't enough, we're facing a health crisis in our country right now like no one has ever seen. There is so much that is uncertain in the world in which we live. The virus is invisible, but the effects of the virus are very visible and scary to so many. People sick, reports of thousands of dying across this world, the economy failing drastically, people losing their jobs, our travels limited, and yes, even our worship services disrupted. All of this can make us afraid, except for the fact of this psalm, the promise of God's Word to us today. I want you to share with you a few promises found in this psalm that can help us not only confront this crisis, but also the crises of our daily lives. The first promise I want you to see this morning is, we will not be afraid because we have a place of safety. We will not be afraid because we have a place of safety. Look again at that first verse. Three times in this psalm, the psalmist tells us we have a place of safety. In verse 1, he says, God is our refuge and strength. Look at verse 7. He ends that verse with this declaration, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. And in verse 11, he repeats it again, the God of Jacob is our stronghold. The city of refuge was a place of protection in the Old Testament. You could go to the city of refuge and find safety from those who were pursuing you. Martin Luther, the leader of the great Protestant Reformation, penned a hymn that is still in our hymn books today called A Mighty Fortress Is Our God. He says in that song that God is our helper amidst the flood that we face in our life. You see, the refuge is a place to hide from danger. One of my favorite Songs is called You Are My Hiding Place. I encourage you to go to YouTube and Google and uh, type in You Are My Hiding Place. Hear the words of this great song. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of the Lord. I will trust in you. You see, my friend, we have nothing to fear because we have God. Nothing can get to us without first going through His permissive will. He is the divine protector of His children. Hence the promise of this psalm, we will not be afraid because we have a place of safety. Secondly, notice, we will not be afraid because we are assured of His divine presence. We will not be afraid because we are assured of His divine presence. Notice again verse 1, God is our refuge and strength. And notice this, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. In verse 7, the declaration is, the Lord of hosts is with us. 
Verse 11, he repeats that phrase again. The Lord of hosts is with us. You remember Daniel in the lion's den? The Lord of hosts was with him. You remember the promise of the Great Commission? And lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. And remember the promise of the 23rd Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. My friend, we can have confidence today because the promise of Scripture is we will not be afraid because we have a place of safety. We will not be afraid because we are assured of His divine presence. But also, we will not be afraid because we are assured of peace. We are assured of peace. One of the hymns in our hymn book says, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Yes, I've got peace like a river. Peace like a river. Peace like a river in my soul. Hear this psalm, verse 4. There is a river. Its streams delight the city of God, the holy dwelling place of the Most High. God is with her and she will not be toppled. God is with her when the morning dawns. Nations rage, kingdoms topple. The earth melts when he lifts his voice. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Yes, we can have peace like a river. Come and see the works of the Lord, the psalmist tells us in verse 8. Look there. Come, see the works of the Lord who brings devastation on the earth. He makes war cease throughout the earth. He shatters bows and cuts spears to pieces. He burns up the chariots. You see those phrases there? He makes, he cuts, he shatters, he burns. At the end of a war, there is always a peace treaty that is signed. Peace is coming to this world ultimately. And it is already here for those who know God. Notice a fourth thing here. And that is the key that releases us from being afraid is this. Stop fighting and know God. The key that releases us from being afraid is to stop fighting and to know God. Look at verse 10. Stop your fighting. And know that I am God. Exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. You see, accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior is the key to peace. It is coming to Him in childlike faith and saying, I need you. I'm helpless. I'm hopeless without you. You see, when you come to Christ in faith and learn to put your trust in Him, you develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, whereby each day you live with that same sense of helplessness and dependency, but yet confidence because of God's presence in your life. Hear Jeremiah the prophet. In Jeremiah 17, verses 7 and 8, he said, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord whose confidence indeed is in the Lord. He will be like a tree planted by water. It sends its roots out toward a stream. It doesn't fear when heat comes, and its foliage remains green. It will not worry in a year of drought or cease producing fruit. My friend, as you stop your fighting and put your trust in God and know Him, there's a peace that comes to your life that this world knows nothing about. The Apostle Paul talking about the calamities that he faced in his life gives us some insight into the peace that God gives us. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 8 he says, We are pressured in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry the death of Jesus in our body so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Right now, this virus seems overwhelming. It seems like it will not end. We wonder when our days will get back to normal. 
if ever some may fear. But listen to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. Therefore, we do not give up. Even though our outer person is being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. For our momentary light affliction is producing for us an absolutely incomparable eternal weight of glory. So we do not focus on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. My friend, do not let the calamity of the current moment cause you to fear and doubt God's ability to take care of you. Trust Him. Obey Him. Depend upon Him. Paul says in Philippians 4, 6, these familiar words, Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses every thought, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yes, the current situation in our country is unprecedented. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. I spoke to an 80-year-old man this morning and asked him, have you ever seen anything like this? He says, never in all of my days. Yes, these are unprecedented days. But our God has always been and always will be more than unprecedented. There's never been anyone like Him. We know who holds tomorrow, and we know who holds our hand. And because of that, we will not be afraid because we have a place of safety. We will not be afraid because we are assured of His divine presence. And we will not be afraid because we are assured of peace. God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold, Selah. And notice again that 10th verse. Stop your fighting and know that I am God. Exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Selah. Think about that. My friend, we will get through this crisis. It seems so overwhelming to us right now, but it is nothing compared to the love, the power, the grace, and the peace of the God that we serve. Don't be afraid. The key that releases us from being afraid is to stop being afraid and know God. Look at that 10th verse one last time. Stop your fighting and know that I am God. Exalted among the nations, exalted on the earth, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Think about that. Count upon that hope and trust in Him. Let's pray. Father, thank You for the promise of Your Word. Lord, in the uncertain world in which we live, we are so grateful that we have a certain God. So I pray, O oh Lord, that You comfort our hearts in these troubled days, that You strengthen our faith and give us the hope to trust in You as we take each day at a time. Lord, help us to be faithful. Help us to share your love to those who have no hope, who have no peace in this season of life. Help us, Lord, to see this as an opportunity to love you, to love each other, and to love the whole world. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.